Nine people implicated in the saga are expected back at the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court. The MPA has now confirmed the rapist and murderer will appear virtually. In case you're wondering who this is, it's Tabo Bester. This while his co-accused, including his girlfriend Nandi Pamakudumana, are expected in person. But at the same time, a group of former employees of Mangaun Prison are planning to march to the facility. Senior reporter ENCS Lindelo Masagane brings us the very latest today, but she's also joined by ENCS is Paul Lily Sweetie Jones, uh, of course, in Bloemfontein. Colleagues, a very warm good morning to you, and it's a big day indeed, uh, where once again we do expect to see all nine co accused uh, in this case appearing in court. But Slee, I understand uh, that confirming that Tabo Best and Nandipa only appearing virtually. Only Tabo Besta will be appearing virtually. Dr. Nandipa will be joining the others in the dock this morning. We have already seen that um, accused eight, Nasase Janssen, has already arrived in court. And uh, we are expecting Dr. Nandipa's father to also be walking through the magistrate's court doors this morning. The other accused, of course, will be coming up from the holding cells um, of the court precinct. We got a confirmation yesterday from the NPA that an agreement had been reached with DCS as well as the NPA for Bester to appear virtually and of course we do know he is being held at the Hosimampu prison. As you can see outside court we do understand that there's going to be a bit of a delay to the start of proceedings this morning. Uh, just outside of the court precinct you can see that um, we have already um, some of the relatives of uh, Katleho uh, Bereng, you would remember that uh, his body was the one that was used as a decoy um, to facilitate Bester's escape from prison. We will be speaking to his father in a moment, as well as uh, representatives from Action SA, who of course have laid a, uh, charges against um, uh, against G4S and DCS for um, the fact that Bereng's body ended up in prison and they want answers as to why that happened. At the same time, of course, we do have a community march uh, that's been planned um, by uh, community members as well as former G4S employees and uh, that is where we find our colleague, of course, Bule Latriti Jones. Yeah, indeed. And, and Paul, I mean, speaking to that as well, uh, the march that's uh, been anticipated for today, what exactly is it all about? Definitely. This is a group of former G4S employees joined by other community members. They basically will be marching to the Department of Correctional Services to hand over a memorandum with a list of demands, including some of the workmen force that they allege is currently being exploited at G4S, but also uh, for the security company to be uh, criminally um, held liable for what has happened um, in the aiding of Tabo Besta, and of course, those were also involved in his escape. Um, but amongst other issues as well, we do I know that it seems as though there wasn't um, a clear understanding as to whether they had received permission to actually peacefully march to the Department of Correctional Services. As you can see, there still hasn't been quite a number of them who have arrived to meet up here and then go to the Correctional Services. But of course, we just saw this police van uh, coming here while we were, um, of course, uh, speaking to you currently, Kamala. We also now see there's a metro uh, police uh, vehicle that's also here, probably to try and see what may happen and to ensure that there isn't any a violent protest or march that erupts from these particular movements that we will be witnessing here. But we were told that they are also expecting uh, more people to be joining uh, the march as well. And I just want you to take a listen to what the organizer of the march had to say when we spoke to him in the morning. Um, number one, they should not grant G4S extension. It is said, like we said now, G4S was given 90 days to vacate the premises. However, we have it on good record that they applied for extension for further 90 days, which possibly will be next week, next year, January. So we're saying no, they should not be given an extension. Mm. Secondly, um, they should be litigated. There are three offices that are involved in this escape and um, put the community in danger. Still now, these three offices have not been dealt with internally. 
the three offices are supposed to be suspended with immediate effect while um the they still consider the, the, the memorandum that you're going to give to them. So criminally, we believe that they were also part of what happened and putting this community in danger. So criminally, they should be um, held responsible. Well, definitely hearing from a uh, disgruntled uh, former employee uh, here, Bula, speaking about that uh, memorandum of understanding they expect to be handing over. But let me come back to you, Slindelo Masakan. I mean, it, just in terms of those in attendance as well, you mentioned earlier on that amongst others, Katlaho Bering's father will be present. Yes, and he joins me now. That is Mr. Batum Polo. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Of course, you'll be seeing um, all nine of the accused for the first time in court today. Um, and you got a glimpse, of course, of Zanda Moyo, who is a accused of claiming that your son's body uh, was his brother. Talk to me about your expectations of court proceedings today and how you foresee this case unfolding. Um, today, I believe there can be a postponement especially after the latest arrest, I think we got pending further investigations. Um, but then I'm, I'm happy with the proceedings uh, of, of this case that at least, you know, um, there is a light at the end of the, of the tunnel. So we hope uh, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, justice will prevail. Talk to me perhaps then about the feelings. Um, you know, it must be quite an emotional journey that you and your family are on uh, in terms of trying to seek answers as to what happened to Gatla. It is, it is true. You know, that is one aspect that is still haunting us because we just want to know how did our son die. If we can know that, at least it will bring some closure because, yes, um, there is a proceedings, but... There is just one as aspect that we need. That is how did our son die. Thank you. All right. Dumelo, I also want to bring in uh, Action SA, who we know, of course, has laid um, charges against DCS as well as G4S, um, wanting them to account for how Katlikho Bering's body was handled. Perhaps if you can just give us an update um, in terms of whether you know uh, where those investigations are. Uh, thank you so much sir, for the opportunity. Uh, I did receive a phone call. Even this morning I've spoken with the, the, the person who is investigating this matter. I'm happy that Katlo's father is here. So we would be going to the police station to be given the update. We have an appointment after this court, uh, after, uh, this court proceeding this morning. And then talk to me about the issue of the delayed start. You have raised concerns around the fact that there are issues when it comes to this case um, appearing and, um, you know, finding that there's no water or there's no electricity. You know, it's, it's very funny. Every time when there's this matter of uh, or this court case, there's always no water or there is load shedding. But any other court, uh, court cases, everything is running normal. So it clearly shows something is not right. And uh, this issue has also been raised by the staff members here to say, we need to investigate deeper. Why is this thing? So it's, a concern, it's, a, it's really a matter of public concern. Why is this thing happening? And our disappointment also is why Tabo Bester, even Nandipa, is not appearing before the court of law. It clearly shows in South Africa when your pocket is thick, you have money, so your integrity can be safe, you can do virtual, you cannot come. So it is unfair. It clearly shows that our justice system is not, is not effective. How can they fail to protect two people to make sure that they come and appear before the court, the court here rather than appearing visually? What about more than 60 million South African people, which means that we are not, so, not safe if they cannot prepare, protect only two people to come here? And as you can see in front of you, Dumelo, we do have the legal teams, uh, Dr. Nanipa's lawyer, as well as Zoli Lesekeleni, who has just arrived, that is Dr. Nanipa's father. As you can see, he's being flanked by his daughter, one of his daughters as well. And so um, we, of course, now anticipate that we'll be seeing um, the accused who are in holding cells to also, um, of course, uh, be brought up. But you can see that Advocate Machin Mglowung um, has... Uh, arrived as well as advocate um, Temba for Zolile Sekeleni. Um, we do know, of course, that Dr. Nandipa at this point uh, has not applied for bail and has no intention of applying for bail. She, in fact, is appealing.
of her court application that um, found that uh, she was um, deported from Tanzania and the court of course finding that it does seem as though um, the state may have in essence colluded with Tanzanian authorities to bring her back but the fact that she had agreed um, to come back to South Africa. That is why her application of course was then dismissed. So um, we will of course be seeing um, Mr. Segeleni, as well as Nastasia Janssen, who are the only two of the accused um, who have been released on 10,000 rand bail. Of course, they do have quite strict bail conditions in terms um, of what they need to adhere to. They need to, of course, ensure that they are appearing for every um, court appearance. They also um, have, um, um, you know, they have to actually... Um, report to a police station um, weekly uh, in terms of ensuring that they are informing the I.O. that they are within the areas uh, that they've uh, said that they would be in. We know that Mr. Seklini is based in Port Edward and that um, Ms. Janssen is in Haydedal here in Bloemfontein. What we also know, of course, um, is that uh, Tao Vesta, who's appearing virtually, his legal team has raised concerns around the virtual appearance, uh, saying that they find it problematic that they cannot consult with um, Besta while he's in the dock, um, and that, of course, infringes on his rights in terms of preparing for his uh, defense. Uh, so at this point, we will, of course, see exactly what unfolds in side of court. We are expecting brief proceedings. We had postponed during the last appearance for further investigations. Uh, the likelihood is that that is the same thing that is going to happen um, here today. But of course, uh, with court proceedings, you just never know uh, what you can anticipate. But at this point, we are quite delayed uh, in terms of the beginning of court proceedings. And that is because there is a um, electricity issue um, at the courthouse. The area is being load shed, so we are just awaiting some uh, updates in terms of when they want court proceedings to begin. Sli, I mean, oftentimes when uh, we come to court, and I, I, I mean, I'm making reference to this because you spoke to Katlago Bering's father a bit earlier on, we also often see Katlago Bering's mother or Katlago Bering's aunt. These were just some of the, you know, most consistent family members that have been coming uh, to almost every court appearance. Did you note anyone else uh, in terms of the family members uh, today besides uh, Katlago's father? Yes, we have actually noted that uh, Katlako's mother has also just arrived. Uh, she, uh, while we were speaking to Mr. Um, Polu, which is Katlako's father, she was just arriving um, outside of court. I've also noticed some of the family members of the other accused, in particular accused number seven, that is Diego Makotza. He, of course, we uh, understand, um, received allegedly 14,000 rand payment for his role. He's a former G4S control room operator, so um, I have seen his brother actually coming to court, and we are hoping to uh, speak to those who would be willing um, to just give us a sense as to how they're coping as the family members of the accused. We had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to speak to the father of accused number three, that is Deb Polo, and he, have, of course, had uh, spoken about the shock um, of finding out that his son was involved in this particular uh, matter and also asking for forgiveness um, uh, to the, for, from the Bering family, saying that, you know, he was just horrified that uh, his son was involved in this matter. Advocate Machini, how are you doing this morning? Thanks, Anna. How are you doing? Good, good. good, good. Um, any expectations for court proceedings this morning? It's going to be brief. It's just going to be postponement, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Just to get a, a, a bit of a comment from Advocate uh, Machini Mutlowung, of course, he represents um, Dr. Nandipa. I do see uh, the lawyer representing uh, representing Mr. Janssen, Mr. Berta. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Your expectations for court proceedings. Perhaps talk to me about um, what you want to see in terms of your clients in particular. In terms of my your client. Client for now. Yes. For, now. for today. Yes. Today is only going to be a postponement. 
Um, the state must inform us how far is the investigation, is the investigation completed, and what is outstanding, because um, it's our client's right to, for, for a speedy trial in terms of our constitutional rights, and we want to exercise that right as quick as possible to conduct a forum. Which court are we going? Regional court, high court, that we can prove our innocence to the, to, to the court. And our version of my client, since the bail proceedings was, I've got nothing to do with this. And that is going, we're going to prove the trial court, also a version, yes. Are you concerned that the continued arrest, um, you know, every other week we're hearing that there's a possibility of an arrest. Uh, we saw an arrest just last week. Do you think this is going to delay your client getting a speedy trial? For the fact that, that there is going to be continuous arrest, it possibly it can delay our, our clients a right for a, a speedy trial. By the end of the day, we go into to why wasn't this individuals uh, arrested? Why was it delay in the investigation? And why all of a sudden now, after a year, people have been arrested? This be arrest was supposed to be conducted long time ago. So our, our uh, right to be exercised is, is, is simple. We want a speedy trial as quick as possible. Yes, Thank you. no problem. That is Mr. Berta, the lawyer for accused number eight, uh, just giving us a sense as to what he expects in terms of the court uh, proceedings. I also do see Mr. Quinane. He represents accused number six, Mutenyana uh, Masukela. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Your expectations for court proceedings today, perhaps what do you want to see um, with the progress of this trial? I well, mean, this, this case. Well, look, we'd like to have a date that could that could be saying to us that uh, we're nearing the date to go to high court but most likely today what's going to happen they're just going to tell us that they're still busy investigating yeah. most uh, likely that's what they're going to say are you concerned with the with how this this case is unfolding especially with the arrests that happen every other week you have another accused joining the matter do you think this 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 brings about delays Absolutely. I mean, this takes time, and you should realize that our guys, seeing that they've not been granted bail, I mean, it, it's really concerning. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. Man. All right. As you can hear, Dumelo, uh, a lot of concern with, uh, in terms of the legal representatives, in terms of um, the progress of this trial and how the continued arrest um, could delay uh, the progress that they want to see for their clients. Of course, um, the accused at this point during their bail applications did tell the courts that they intend on pleading not guilty to the charges. Um, and of course, um, as you've heard um, from most of the legal representatives, there's going to be a postponement and perhaps some of the issues are ventilated uh, with regard to the progress. I actually do see uh, the brother of uh, Diego Makotza just walking into court. Diego Makotza is accused number uh, seven. Uh, perhaps maybe talk to me about how you and your family are doing and if you've had an opportunity to speak to your brother uh, since his arrest. Yes, we have. And we had the opportunity to speak to him. Uh, no, we are, we, are, we, are, we are just fine as the family. Yeah. Yeah, we're taking uh, uh, one uh, day at a step. Yeah. Then we are, we are fine as a family. Yeah. And you still believe in his innocence. Do you think he's being framed at all in this matter? Yes, I think uh, we still believe in his innocence. Yeah. Yes, because we are living at the uh, innocent until proven guilty. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. That is uh, Tiago Makotza's brother. Uh, Tiago Makotza is accused number seven in this matter. And then you will see sitting next to Tiago Makotza's brother is uh, Nastasia Janssen with her mother. That is accused number eight. Um, she, of course, also recently receiving uh, 10,000 rand bail. She's based here in Bloemfontein. Uh, she has a number of bail conditions that she needs to adhere to. And just in front of her, of course, um, the other accused, the only other accused that's um, out in bail, uh, that is Mr. Zolile Sekeleni. So uh, at this point, we are see seeing the gallery filling up, meaning that um, we should be starting soon, but of course uh, we do see that there are a number of uh, meetings taking place um, as well as legal representatives um, you know, consulting with, in, with each other in terms of what they plan on addressing the magistrate on.